Oh boy, this shows a motor. Right. Yeah. A whole black situation, maybe. Not the didn't smartest. Think that through, did didn't think that through today. I didn't think it was going to be as good. Well, look, um, hope you're enjoying our show. And uh, we wanted to come and get a look at one of John Deere's newest offerings to the table. Mm -hmm. We have seen a, a 120M, but we wanted uh -huh. to. We had one last year. But that was really the last of the this M is a series. New generation, a new like, generation uh, yeah. M series tractor. So we popped into uh, Johnson Galpin stand, and we're going to grab Gavin here and uh, see if we can get a wee look around him. I think he's trying to get the final touches to get it all cleaned up. But we're going to go and give him an awful abuse here shortly. <laughs> see what it's about. So, <laughs> so we're going to catch Gavin. Yeah. We look at them. There's the bluffer there, Gary himself, look, oh, lying up against that tractor. Well, <laughs> crack. <laughs> you alright, Gavin? Not so bad. Welcome to the, our uh, Part in the Grass main online show. Thank you. Thanks, Gavin. Thank you for the invite. It's been a privilege as always. Well, you've done exactly what we've asked you to do. We've asked you to get one of the new MCs on here because we want to get it studied up. Yeah. So, is it worth our while even making the effort of coming to see around it? I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. You know, everybody, well not everybody, but a lot of people dismiss the M as a inferior sort of product in the range, but I can tell you they've put a lot of work into these tractors and they've massively, massively improved them. Well, we know, because we run the 120 AM last year, so yeah. you may show us around it. No problem, my pleasure. What is this now? This is, this, a, this is a large frame 6 AM tractor, so this is the, the first of these we've had in. Um, we've had a customer who's bought four of these. Um, all in similar spec. Now this, so this is on your show, but it's sold. It's sold. Wow. It's sold, but we're we're fortunate enough the customers let us use it for uh -huh. this yeah. this event. So, um, lovely spec in this one here, um, with the full ultimate LED light pack, um, all the lights all around, roof work lights. We've got our side corner lights like we have in our R series, which is a really nice feature in the new M. You know, we've got that. 360 degree visibility, pretty much. Ah, that's a nice job. Yeah. Oh yes, I see that there now. They're, they're, they're quality LED light. They got a, a, a very, very bright light. Um, as any of the users will, will be fit to tell you. Um, but I think you'll notice, the, fir the first thing you'll notice probably is the roof line. You know that, on, on the new M it's standing, right? you know, at first glance you think it actually, mm -hmm. oh, that, that's a uh, six hour cab and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, it actually is the same cab frame we had, you know, on a, on a 10 series uh, tractor. It's just, it just it. done a bit of styling work They've just it. done a real, a real nice revamp on it and given it a real nice fresh look. Well, what about the tractor itself? Engine, performances, Yeah. is that, so, like, is that a, is that a hundred and seven, one, six, one, seven, five M, is that, 175 horsepower. Yeah, so just, just a wee bit on, on John Deere's numbering. Um, we've got the six indicates the range, the three the next three digits indicates the horsepower. Engine so or PT. In this, in this case, we've got six series, 175 horsepower at the flywheel. Okay. Yep. And then we've got our, our M letter in the end, which indicates the spec level. So John Deere tends to go on an E, M, and R mm -hmm. level. Um, from low spec to high spec, respectively. Well, what's different inside them? I mean, again, you're going to have to go up and and and, and shows we can't come up with you um, under the current are situation you, of, you, of COVID. But you can you may go up there and that's all right. Shows around the inside of that I'll, tractor uh, and explain it to us. I'll do my remote best for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like one of the first things you'll notice when you get into the cab is there's there's no dash in front of you. Hey, what's that all about? Well. There's several things about it. I think the first thing you will notice is how much more visibility it gives you down, you know, the side of the bonnet. They've integrated uh, what we call a PDU display on the, the A post. Um, some of you might be familiar with this from uh, both the, well, seven, eight, and nine R, uh, first of all. And then the, the, the five R series tractors have, have something very similar on here. Um, but it, it's nice and intuitive, like, you know, you, you use this, rotary scroller here to yeah. flick between your different modes and you have different buttons for settings there for your 
your draft settings and your transmission settings. You just scroll across here. And what gearbox is in there? This is a command quad. Now, what is that? Well, you know, really, this is a, a lazy man's uh, auto quad transmission. Um, now, we have this one built into a, a command arm, which has, you know, some nice features on it built into the armrest yeah. of the seat. Um, but back to the actual gearbox itself, um, it still has the traditional uh, five range setup with four power shift gears in each, each range. So you've got uh, A to E and one, two, three, four in each. Um, B, C, D, E is your basically your full range of gears. Um, and then you can lock it in either of the A, B or C ranges as well then for some, some field work. Never seen on an M before. We've got an electronic hitch switch. Oh, why? Like seen on a 30 series and R series tractor. We've got nice electric spools, which we've never seen on an M series before. In this case, with a command arm and the spools are divided up. You can get an optional joystick, which would sit here, um, but this particular customer chose to uh, select without. Um, fast raise lower switch for your arms, nicely positioned, nice and handy. The infamous auto tractor zoom button here. This tractor has uh, auto track on board, full auto track, um, with a Starfire 6000 receiver, accurate to within uh, 10 centimeters. Coming around the side, side of the tractor here, you'll notice the Group 48 tires. So we've got 650-65 or 42 Trelleborg on this, this tractor. Um, it's a very popular size on a lot of the tractors we sell. It just seems to be a nice all-rounder tyre. It lifts the tractor up high enough uh, to give plenty of ground clearance. Um, they're not overly expensive to replace. You know, some people think a 42 versus a 38 is hugely more expensive if it comes replacement time, but it's not maybe as bad as you, what you would think. Coming around the back end here, we've got large frame tractor. It means it's got the, the heavier back end on it, the heavier transmission. Uh, it's got the 114 litre minute hydraulic pump. Um, but what you'll notice in here probably first of all is the shock and spring setup for the suspension and uh, these nice torsion bars either side. Um, that, that really gives the tractor a nice smooth ride without that rolly feeling mm -hmm. you know that you might get in that typical sort of suspension setup in a cab. That is adjustable too, Gethin, hasn't it? Well, it's adjustable, yes, Aye, but it's only adjustable by the dealer. Yes. Um, you need a special tool to do oh, it. Oh, why? Um, but like if it was... a real, a real if, plus point for the dealer, but... But if you wanted it a little softer or a little firmer, you could... That's correct. You could make you, it happen. She's kept it, it with happen. air brakes. Yep, so this particular one has got air brakes. It's also got an ABS plug up here. Mm-hmm. A lot of trailers nowadays have uh, onboard ABS. Obviously, you need a, a signal from the machine to make that work, so we're able to accommodate that with our tractors. Uh, down here, we've got an Isobus plug. Well, that's might as well cut it. It's a common plug now for Isobus implements like. Yeah. Well, Gathan, that's the M series, and I suppose from your point of view as a dealer and a, sales, a salesman here, at Johnson Gelpman, it's, it's adding a lot more product to your arsenal. Definitely. Compared to what you would have considered before. But there's also something else, and you have it on your stand here, that's that, that that's really come in within the last, what, three, two years? Three years three now, years? believe it or not, yeah. Well, it'll be three years this, this August, we got the notice. Um, and yes, you're, I presume you're talking about the, the Kramer product. Oh, am I? Well, what's but, that little machine? So that's a third. Or is that a little machine? That, that is actually a big machine in terms of a Kramer. Um, it's a 35.8 T. So just from a numbering perspective again, we've got uh, KL. What's in the key? Kramer Longreach. No. Ah, I thought that was a class because there's a boom on it. It's loader. Kramer loader. Ah, she's a wheeled loader. Yes. She's a wheeled yes. loader. Yes. Kramer so loader. It's a KT, which yes. is a yes. 3.5 ton to 8 metre. The, thir the, three, the 35 or the 3.5 is actually the tipping load. So it means oh, that that's at full. If, if you have full capacity in the bucket 
and she starts to lift the back wheels, that capacity is three and a half ton. But that, that does translate, I think, to something like 2.7 ton payload, to, you know, to what we would commonly refer to. Um, oh, again, the point... I did not know that. The point eight um, actually refers to spec level. So they do a point five and a point eight. Right. So the point five is typically 30K, slightly smaller cab, <laughs> oil, oil over oil trans, uh, Well, hydraulics. I get that wrong. <laughs> Yeah, and, you, you uh, just wouldn't guess that, would you? No, you, you, you'd, have, you'd have no idea. And then uh, the, the T then, that is probably the most obvious part of the, the numbering system, T for telescopic. So we'll, do, we'll walk away. We'll we'll walk around, around sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. A camera needs me. Can I, I need to sort the numbers for Kramer. Hey? <laughs> so you'll see this uh, ego speed in the door. So that, that's another thing with the, the, the point eight spec. Um, you're, you're able to get 40k and it's Kramer's own transmission. Right, okay. Um, it's a very efficient transmission actually. A lot of people are surprised. You know, they think, oh, hydrostatic, it's going to be dead, or it's going to be really sluggish, mm -hmm. but in actual fact, the, the, the Kramer is really responsive. We loved the Kramer we had out. We thought she was a grand hull. Aye. Can't the remember what she was, the telehandler. Aye. Yeah, yeah. We, we really liked her. Yeah. She came really sort of from here too. Yeah. So this is like the Kramer of old. This is like your traditional Kramer, yeah. only it's got telescopic. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of people, you know, that don't know about Kramers, they automatically assume it's a pivot steer machine because no. it looks like yeah, yeah. a pivot steer machine, but that's not. Like, just, just look at it from this angle. Like, it's, it's very much a fixed machine. Like, can you see anywhere it pivots? No. So that's what makes them unique. You're still sitting in the middle, like your, your bendy pivot handler. Steer. But you have the, the added Stability. advantage of having, you know, four-wheel steer, crab steer, two-wheel steer. That's extremely manoeuvrable and extremely stable. You know, Kramer yeah, do that. A, a pivot steer that size yeah. isn't nice. Well, if you if you imagine a pivot steer, right, and you have a you have a, a load in the front. Mm -hmm. As soon as you turn your steer into either side, that's actually transferring the weight. And as soon as you transfer weight, that makes the machine unstable. Yeah. 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 Whereas your Kramer, because the main frame of the machine is staying in line, it's yeah. it's, that's where it makes massive gains. Kramer do demonstrations at their factory and they have a, I think it's a 30 degree slope or something and they're fit to go and carry these full, well, fully weighted machines up and mm -hmm. turn around the top of that slope and back down again. They run what we engines there and we do it. That's a 100 horse Deutsch, yeah. Deutsch. 100 right. horsepower of that B wagon Yeah. yeah. Wow. Sorry to totally jump up in the question here, but see halfway up that boom? Uh -huh. What's that green button? That is a uh, depressurizing button. So if you're hitting uh, an implement You hit that and uh, that's just for putting the pipes. You press the button and she'll it's release like all the pressure to your auxiliary. So you can hook your implement on, push your pipes on without having to key on and key off or trying to get it to float. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a really nice feature. Ah, that's that's pretty. Hey, there's guys, nothing as annoying. Guy, yeah. we're going to have to make tracks and get back to our stand here. So okay, no problem. Think, Gethin, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Gethin. You're very Hope welcome. You have a great rest of your show, and we maybe slip and see if we can get a wee burger here or something before we go, or a nice cream or something. Thanks, Gethin. Have a good show, son. Thank, thank you. you.